when you are studying hypothesis testing, one thing that's going to come up are type 1 and type 2 errors. So I just want to talk about what is a type 1 error, what is a type 2 error, show you a little table here, um, and uh, add a couple of things that you need to know about them. Um, when you make a decision on it, with a hypothesis test, you're either going to reject the null hypothesis or you're going to fail to reject the null hypothesis or not reject it. Now, you could be right or you could be wrong. Well, we're hoping that most of the time that we're right, but every once in a while, there's probably a situation where we have made an error, where we rejected the null when, we, when it was actually true or we failed to reject the null um, when it is actually false and we should have rejected it. These are called type 1 and type 2 errors. So here we go. A type 1 error occurs if the null hypothesis is rejected when it is actually true. So if the null hypothesis is true but you reject it, that is called a type 1 error. Okay, what is a type 2 error? Well, again, it deals with the null hypothesis. A type 2 error occurs if the null hypothesis is not rejected when it is actually false. So you see, I should have rejected it because it's false, but I did not reject it, and that results in something called a type 2 error. Now, another way to look at this is by looking at this little table down here. You can kind of see how it all fits together. So, if the null hypothesis is true, and you do not reject the null hypothesis, then you have made the correct decision. Okay, that should make sense. The null hypothesis is true, you do not reject it, you're correct. Another thing here, if the null hypothesis is false and you do reject it, then once again, you've made the correct decision. If the null hypothesis is false and you reject it, you've made the correct decision. But what if the null hypothesis is true, but you reject it? Well, you've made a mistake, and that kind of mistake is called a type 1 error. A type 2 error is when the null hypothesis is false and you should reject it, but you do not reject it. That is called a type 2 error. There should be an R on the end of that right there. Okay. Now, one of the last thing about type 1 and type 2 errors, you will never know if you have made a type 1 or a type 2 error. Because if we knew if the null hypothesis was actually true or actually false, then we wouldn't have to perform the hypothesis test. If we already knew that the null hypothesis was true, we could just stop right there and say it's true. And if we knew that the null hypothesis was false, we could stop right there and say it was false. So the purpose of a type 1 error and type 2 error in, in uh, most statistics classes, or the, the, what your teacher will probably want you to know, is what is an I, a type 1 error, when will that occur, or when will a type 2 error occur? And knowing these definitions will give you that. Your teacher may also ask you to, or may get, give you a scenario, and then you need to describe what would a type 1 error look like in this, uh, in this context, or a type 2 error in this context. So once again, you'll never know if you've made these errors. You just need to know what they are and what the definitions are, and if given a scenario, what would a type 1 or type 2 error look like? I hope this helps.